The crowds have not yet arrived, but come 8 o'clock tonight, you can bet they will. That's because a tribute to a band that has won numerous awards in its lifetime that is so well known it would be hard to find someone that hasn't heard of them will be center stage, ready to perform for fans of all generations. Richie York was flown in to introduce the band. He's a well-established author and journalist who wrote for the magazine Rolling Stone on most of the bands in the 70s, like the Beatles and the Bee Gees. It's a band that I first saw uh, back in 1969 and I first heard their f- first album before it came out and uh, I suspected and predicted that they would be the next big band in rock and roll and they did in fact become that. And at the same time a lot of people were putting them down. Rolling Stone magazine were calling them names and saying this will never work, This how can this possibly be successful? And to me it was so obvious that it would be successful that I went right out there on a limb and said this is going to be the next big band. And of course they were, and uh, I have to say they were always very grateful for that and treated me very honourably and gratefully and invited me to their shows and I maintained a relationship with them uh, until this day. A relationship that has brought him here today to introduce the Jason Bonham Led Zeppelin experience. Not just any cover band though, as Jason Bonham is of course the son of John Bonham, who originally drummed for Led Zeppelin. And I can say, having heard a little bit of it all, that it is quite incredible how this sounds. And people who loved Led Zeppelin will have trouble telling that this isn't exactly the same lineup as it was in the grand old days. All sorts of bands try and play Led Zeppelin songs and so on, but this is the real thing. I mean, this is the bloodline, for want of a better phrase. I mean, this is, I mean, John Bonham was the greatest drummer in rock and roll. This is his son, who plays just like he did. A son that has never forgotten where he came from. Um, Five years old is when, about four or five is when dad taught me how to play. And kind of just grown up um, in the music world. Obviously I lost him at a very early age. It's just uh, last week was 30 years since he passed away. I was only the uh, age of 14. So kind of um, then, you know, chose the path of righteousness or madness, I should say. Um, and I've done my time, you know, toured, done the thing all in the back of a van, driving across and loading the gear. Uh, it's, been, it's been pretty cool, you know, a lot of up and down, so I had some problems with myself with uh, my choice of addictions and alcohol and drugs. I wanted it all. I wanted to be the same as, as the books. Uh, but, you know, I've managed to come through it. And now... Um, as one of my projects, I got the chance to put this show together, which is uh, called the Jason Bonham Led Zeppelin Experience, where, um, well, to a little bit of background, three years ago, Led Zeppelin did a re- reunion concert, if you could call it that, for a, a dearly beloved Armit Ertigan, who was the head of Atlantic Records, who passed away uh, in, a, in a very uh, in a bad accident. Um, so he's a, a great loss to the music world. So. They decided to play a show and uh, they asked me to play drums and we, we had six weeks of rehearsals and I, I had a fantastic time getting to know my dad's bandmates as an adult rather than just being the kid that used to run around and annoy them all when uh, back in the day. So it was great. I had a great six weeks with them. Did the show which was critically acclaimed and everyone really did think it was going to carry on, even myself. I bought the car, the house, and uh, it. Um, but sadly, it didn't, and, and that was a lot. That took me a while to get over. You know, it was kind of being given the keys to the city, and then suddenly they knock on your door and say, "Sorry, wrong address." You know, or winning the lottery and your wife didn't do the ticket that day. Um, it really was hard to get over. But um, picked myself up, dusted myself off. Um, you know, and kind of went in the studio with another project which just came out and doing really well called Black Country Communion. Not just a cover band, Jason explains that it takes heart and soul to really capture the feeling of the real experience. Just being up here and playing the, the Led Zeppelin songs, I said, I didn't, you know, when you played with them, it's kind of hard to come and do this. And, you know, to fake it is kind of hard. So uh, we said, we're not going to fake it. This is. Each one of the, the guys I'm using, we're all big, big fans. We play it with the love and the respect it needs. 
you know, when Anring got involved, the people who kind of contacted me about this, who uh, put on the show Rain, and they're a Calgary, uh, you know, local company, um, they were the ones that said, well, let's make it as big as it can be. And as you can see, it's pretty, yeah. So, I mean, I walked in and was kind of, wow, this is kind of cool. You know, I he may sent my son a picture, you know. So you didn't want to do it at first? No, you know, when you play with them, it's kind of like, uh, you kind of want to stay with that that thing. But um, since we started, you know, got since we got to where we are, it, it's now I'm like, are we going to do any more? You know, this is so cool. You know, we really enjoy it. It's just great fun to take now. Uh, I, you know, as I say, I don't want people to believe that this is my entire life. I'm just going to follow and be in a Led Zeppelin tribute thing. I, it just worked out that this year with the 30th anniversary, um, just with the fact that I was, you know, I had some free time from the other project and it's great music to play. We, we, we really are having a great time and I'm, I can't wait to see the reaction from the first night. It's been hard. Hard, especially because Jason is drumming to the same songs that he can fondly remember his late father drumming to. The show is said to be interactive with the audience, including never-seen-before home video and personal accounts. Some footage that I haven't seen for 40 years of, of Dad and I, as children, you know, when I'm a kid, uh, on our family vacations. And, and some of it was a little hard for me to watch. I don't know why... This year, I, I miss him more than I've ever missed him in my life. You think because you're playing his music? No, I kind of always pursued that. I, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's my... I just spoke to my son, and he's 14. And I just see this, what it would do to him. I know how important... <laughs> I'm getting a bit sad. Um, how important I am to him. Um, so, I, you know, I... I know how important my dad is, and still to me, because I lost him. I didn't go through adolescence with him. I didn't get to the stage of like, I hate you, I'm leaving, I'm going out, I hate your band. We didn't get that. I lost him while he was still, Dad, I want you to be my pal. Oh, you know what, is this okay, Dad? Is this fine? So uh, I've always kind of seeked his approval to now, and if I can't get it from him, through his bandmates, through always the people I've played with have been older artists that knew him. So it might be a sad thing, but I, I don't know. I just, maybe this is going to be my kind of completion of uh, to put some things uh, that I know, you know, a closure or something. Writing an autobiography of Led Zeppelin after not writing since the 70s, Richie is planning on writing a piece once again for Rolling Stone and including his experiences in Dawson Creek. Zeppelin were to me, without question, the greatest rock and roll band ever. So it's important any uh, continuation, any reincarnation, call it what you want, what you want. You know, just to bring this back to the stage here, to me, is a very important thing. Lindy Free, CJC TV News, Dawson Creek.